Hey guys, Matthew, and welcome to the second episode of my Hideout Zero to Hero. So in yesterday's, ep yesterday's episode, uh, we went from basically 0 to 2025x, 20, and today we went from about uh, that amount of currency to around 60-ish exalt. Uh, so looking at our uh, excellence here, it's at about 53.5, but of course it never tells the whole story. It doesn't account for bulk, it doesn't account for good rolls. Uh, there's a lot of missing things here. Uh, so it's more around the 60-ish exalt that we've made so far in 14 hours. I played 7 hours yesterday, I played 7 hours today. Uh, so we've been making roughly 4.5-ish exalt an hour since the very, very beginning. And you'll see that today I basically did very similar things than yesterday. I'm going to sound like a bit of a broken record, but what I decided to focus on in today's video uh, is basically instead of exactly the what, the play-by-play -play, like I did in yesterday's video, I'm going to focus on trying to teach you how to find these kind of gaps in the market that you can fill up and make currency yourself. Because the thing is these gaps in the market are typically very, uh, they, they don't last for a very long time. So you have to be on top of them and you have to know how to find them. Which is what I realized in yesterday's video, I said don't do exactly what I did because it's probably not going to work. Instead do something similar. Uh, but I never really explained how to go about finding these different gaps in the market. So that's what we're going to do, go ahead and do today. We're going to focus on a few different uh, tips and aspects of this. Uh, four different things that I did today in order to make this 40-ish exalt that I made. Uh, so we are going to focus on bulking. So I've, I, I personally did a good bit of essences today. It made a quite a few exalts off of that and I did a lot of scarabs these are always really good typically polished are going to be uh, pretty good if you have a little bit of currency but gilded are definitely better if you have a lot of capital and then winged are even better to do in bulk but typically sell slower and of course they are much much more pricey so you need a lot more capital to get started now the next thing is going to be faded uniques and the fact that rolls stay now this is something I've mentioned many many times before but it's something that you have to remember and I'll showcase why. And then, of course, Prophecy Farming, uh, something that I've mentioned in yesterday's video, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the blocks that I used. Uh, so again, I did I did a lot of different things today, a lot of different flipping, a lot of different trading, a lot of different bulking of different things. Uh, so instead of telling you exactly what I did, I'm going to showcase how I go about finding these things. So it's very simple. What I do here, here's an example of an essence. I will basically go under the bulk exchange and I will look at the value in chaos of buying a specific item. That could be an essence, that could be a fossil, that could be a scarab. It doesn't matter what it is. This is how I'll go about it. And I'm going to put the minimum spot, uh, the, no minimum stock. So this is going to tell me essentially the baseline minimum price that I can buy this item for. So as you can see right now, I can get deafening essences of rage. This guy's got four, three, two, two. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of them listed for 4x or 4c, and then it goes up to 5c, and there is a ridiculous amount of them listed for 5c. Look at that; it just goes on and on and on and on for 5c, right? So even if I was to put at, you know, I I'd like to buy them three at a time, right? Because yeah, buying them one at a time is is okay, and of course you'll make profit. But if you can buy them multiple at a time, you're actually going to increase your profit margin per trade. It's all about profit per trade. It's not just about the percent that you're making on the trade. It's also about making sure that you're making a good amount of value because trades, you can only do so many in a minute given, you know, loading times, people not answering trades and all that. Uh, so if I look at about like buying them three at a time, you can see that there are still a lot of them available for 4C and even 5C. There's still a ton of them available. Matter of fact, there's hundreds of them available for 5C. Okay, so now that I know that I can easily get them for 5C, I need to know if it's worth it. Uh, to actually buy them. So what I'll do is I'll look if what if I had like 50 of these essences in chaos value, right? Uh, how much would then they be then 5.5 and 6c and then it goes up to 7c. And there's a pretty limited amount, but there's a lot of them. And if I'm going to be buying them for four or five C to just to sell them for 5.5, that is absolutely not worth my time. But the thing is, I do need to look in exalts because the people who typically are going to buy huge amounts of supply are going to go through the exalt value. So now what I'm going to look at is how many can I sell for in, in exalts? And this guy's got 36, so he's got about 1x worth. This guy's got about 1x worth. So there's this guy, so there's this guy, so there's this guy, so there's this guy. So there's nobody who has an absolute crazy amount except this guy, right? This guy's a 22 for 1x. So now the next thing I need to figure out is 
well, if I need to give more than 22 to beat this guy, because he has so much supply, if you ever put them at 22 per X, he is, you're never going to sell. He's going to sell be, be, be before you. So you need to give more. So you need to give 23, right? Or 22.5 if you're going to go in sets of like 45 at a time. Uh, so let's just call it 23. So if I'm going to be giving, uh, I'm going to be getting an exalt and I need to give 23, that means that I need to be paying no more than 6.3 chaos each in order to make a profit. Well, I know that I can buy these in bulk at about three at a time for roughly four to five C, which means that is less than 6.3. But if I'm paying five C and I'm getting 6.3, that means that I'm getting one C, 1.3 chaos per per essence that I buy. If I'm buying these essences one at a time, that is horrible value, not worth my time at all. But what if I could buy them say 10 at a time? Because in that case, that means that I'm making just over 10 chaos per trade. And as you can see, there are a lot of them listed for uh, about 5C each, even in stacks of 10. So I know that if I buy these in stacks of about 10 and then I sell them in exalts and I give 23, I'll be given the most uh, compared to anyone else, right? I'll be matching the people who are giving the most, which means I'm most likely to sell them, which means I'll sell them for 6.3C. So I'm making 1.3C per essence. If I'm buying them 10 at a time, that means about 13 chaos per trade. Now, of course, this might not sell instantly, but this is just one instance, right? This is just one example of how I go about it. For the essences, this is exactly what I do. I'll do the same thing for scarabs. Let's look at, okay, I've got some chaos. I want to buy some gilded bestiary scarab. Now I'll probably end up having to buy these one at a time because there's very limited supply, right? If I look at people who have like three at a time, it's probably going to go up in price pretty quickly and there's going to be very limited supply because it's, you know, a pretty rare scarab. Uh, it's a gilded scarab. But if I'm going to be buying one at a time, you can see that I'm going to be getting them at 4C. There's a few of them and then it goes up to 5C and there's quite a few. There's a lot of them listed at 5C. So if I was to buy them at 5C, right? Well, how many uh, how many do I have to give up if I if someone's going to be buying them from one exalt? So someone's going to give me an exalt from mine. Well, I'm going to have to give roughly this guy's got about 1x worth, 1x worth, 1x worth. I'll probably have to match this guy because this dude has way too many uh, and he's not willing to, he, he's got a pretty high price, right? So I'll probably have to match around this guy. So now that I need to look at it was, well, if I have to give up 16 of them and an exalt is 145C, I essentially need to pay no more than nine chaos each in order to turn a profit. Well, I just looked at it and I can buy them for, for, for four or five C, which means that if I, if I need to basically pay any le or uh, anything less than nine and I'm buying them for five, I'm almost doubling my money every single time I buy one of those. So that's a pretty good market, right? That's definitely a gap that you could come in. And because there's such a limited amount of supply at the 16, right? There's only this guy and this guy. And after that, it goes up to way less. Uh, it's probably a pretty decent idea to consider doing Gilded Bestiary Scarab. And again, this applies to every single set of scarabs. You just have to do the same verification that I just did. So this is pretty much how I go about figuring out the discrepancies when it comes to bulking in in uh, in trade. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is faded uniques and the fact that rolls remain. Okay, so I was farming some prophecies and I got a dishonorable death, which is a prophecy that allows you to turn Hyrie's Bite into Hyrie's Demise. Now, if I was to just price check this bad boy, uh, we would see that uh, my price checker crashed, which is unlucky. Uh, but we would see that, for example, on Excellence, uh, that would be worth uh, 45C. Okay, it's worth 45C for a dishonorable death. I could just be like, okay, I'll sell it for 45C, cash in the money, and be happy. But instead, right, instead of selling it for like 45C, what I can do is do the prophecy myself. So I could buy the Hyrie's Bite, not corrupted, for about a chaos, and then I could go ahead and sell it, right, the Hyrie's Demise, uh, not corrupted as well, and I could sell that for about 65C. So instead of making you know, 45 C off my prophecy, I'll make an extra 20 C due to the fact that I'm going to go ahead and complete the prophecy. But I can go a step further because one thing that's really interesting on Faded Uniques is that if there is a role that is available on both items, it will stay the same. For example, you see how this one has attack speed 7 to 10 and this one has attack speed 7 to 10. That means that this attack speed role on the unfaded version will remain on the faded version. And this goes for every single stat that is the exact same. It needs to be perfectly the same. So attack speed, and in this case, also life gain for each enemy hit by your attacks. So what I can do instead is buy a quiver, which has the 10% attack speed and the life gain for each enemy hit by your attacks. 
and instead of buying it for 1c i might have to pay well there's a couple of them listed for cheap but i might have to pay upwards of 10c for that right there's a, quite a few of them listed for 10c and a little bit below that instead of the initial one or two chaos so i'm definitely having to invest more but in this case instead of my quiver being worth like 60c or so in this case if i've got 10 percent attack speed and three it's going to be worth more like 85c okay 80 85c uh, so instead of going from 45c baseline profit and then going to 60c now i'm going to basically 85 now this is not pure profit because i have to pay about 10c for the quiver but that's still an extra 30 chaos that i'm making pure profit 30 chaos from buying that quiver for uh, you know 10c and doing the prophecy myself instead of just outright selling the prophecy i'm making 30 chaos for buying one little quiver and going to act six killing a monster and boom an extra 30 chaos but that doesn't tell the whole story because yes the attack speed and the life gain is going to stay and the other things don't have any rules but one thing that does roll on this quiver is the all attributes and the thing is yes it's about 85c for a horrible roll but if you get lucky and of course if you do a lot of these you are bound to get some higher tier a uh, higher amount of all attributes and if you get like a perfect tier of all attributes as you can see they go for roughly two exalt right so if you get a, a really really good roll close to perfect or perfect you are going to basically turn that 60 c profit or so to over 150 c profit just due to the fact that you got a little lucky and it's a one in 16 to get a perfect roll but that doesn't mean that you need to be perfect as long as you're over 25 it'll be worth about 1x instead of the adc that i was talking about so there's a lot of additional profit to be made there and this applies to basically every single uh faded unique so this would go for of course uh i did one earlier of nightmare awakens right if i price check this nightmare awakens is 5c and the malachi's simula is 45c well you can't quite see it because of my banner which means i would make about 40c profit uh but uh if you get a good roll you could sell them for about 60c which is an additional 15c profit and these even the perfect bases are one chaos so you don't have to invest anything extra uh the mentor for this uh waka to uh, right these things don't go for a lot of currency they go for about 50c and the mentor goes for 20c so you're making about 30 chaos profit from just finishing the 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 actual uh prophecy but the thing is the energy shield roll that is i believe the flat energy shield or the percent one or the other i can't remember stays the exact same from the unfaded to the faded so that means oh it is the percent because you can see as you can see i bought a 76 percent on this in this case uh on the unfaded which cost me like five chaos and then i turned it in and i got a medium roll on the flat but it's worth 100 c instead of roughly 50 chaos so there's a lot more value there and earlier i got pretty lucky i bought a 79 percent and i got 80 flat uh, so it was one off perfect and that sold for 1.5x that's a far cry from the 50c that is advertised on my price macro here so it's very important that when you're doing these faded connect uh, faded uh, uniques that you remember that the roles really do matter and the ones from the unfaded to the faded stay the same uh, so that's going to add up a lot of currency over time okay uh, so yeah roles matter a lot and the final thing I want to talk about today is prophecy farming and blocks so you can buy prophecies for about three to 3.5 or so uh, silver per chaos which is actually pretty good value because there's a lot of prophecies which are really expensive and that sell for a bulk markup for example the twins here is advertised at 28 chaos but it's worth like 40 uh twice enchanted are advertised at like three but they're worth four um a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh the lightning or fire or undead tempest like all the tempests are advertised at 4c but they sell for like 8 to 10 if you have a lot of them in bulk uh, so all of these prophecies sell for markups, which means that you're getting a lot more value for your silver coins. And there's, of course, the maps as I've been talking about. Now, it does seem like the market has dried up. As you can see, uh, I've, I've been selling my stagnations instantly and my haunted mansions have no problem selling. But the estuary and the dungeons are not selling too, too well. I might consider Horizon orbing them uh, because they're so cheap into either haunted mansion or stagnations to get rid of them. But I'll give it another few hours to see if I can get rid of them first. Okay, but the last thing I want to talk about is prophecy blocking Let because it is a very important. Future. Now, I would recommend you take a screenshot or you write these down. These are the prophecies that you want to block. Now, prophecy blocking is the exact same thing as blocking with sextants, right? When you're sextant blocking, for example, what I have set up here, you see how I have this 
this watch down here has a uh, shrine for gloom shrine lightning damage and cold damage monsters so that makes it so if i was to roll this sextant here it can never get any of these three sextants uh so it's the same logic we are blocking to Make never get down. these prophecies whenever we are basically going about it and this is my prophecy which i'm basically using i only keep one slot uh, to actually uh, like normally this would not be there I would have deleted this prophecy because it's not one that would sell uh, but unfortunately I'm out of silver coins so that's why it's there uh, but the blocks that you want are sharpened blade hardened armor golden touch unbearable whispers unbreathing queen and the alchemist now the reason for that is that because they are highly highly weighted and they're either very very expensive to 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 seal as you can see nine silver coins which is three chaos which is crazy uh, just to then throw it away so the the chain ones are very very expensive or they are super super high weight uh so the hardened armor for example shroud and blade the golden touch these are some of the highest weighted prophecies which are absolutely worthless so you don't want to see them as often uh, so by blocking them you are removing them from the pool entirely and these are definitely the prophecies i would recommend and then you only need one slot where you are going to be basically uh spamming you know seek then you get the prophecy you seal it if it's good you keep it if it's bad you delete it and for deleting prophecies very quickly, I would highly recommend you get yourself a slash destroy uh, macro, or I just type it. Uh, I just type it manually. But what that is essentially, uh, slash destroy macro allows you that to delete anything that's on your cursor. Uh, so it allows you to delete things very very quickly. As you can see, if I just put a bunch of scroll of wisdom, I can literally just do enter, up arrow, which is going to go to my previous message, enter. And I can delete things very, very quickly. Now, the reason why I do it manually instead of with a macro is because I don't want to get caught like deleting a stack of 10x or, uh, you know, a headhunter by accident or something like that because it will delete anything on your cursor. There's no way to get it back. Uh, so that's why I like to do it manually because I, I know that it's safe uh, and I'm not going to mess up. But yeah, you would seal. If it's bad, delete, seek, delete, seek, delete. And then whenever you have a good one, one of the sellable ones, right? Uh, be it Tempest, Twins, uh, Plagues, whatever it is really, you just throw it up in your dump tabs and then you end up selling them and they sell pretty quickly. Uh, at the end of my stream, I, this entire tab was full and I had another half tab that was full or so and I've already sold more than uh, almost half, right? I've sold almost half of my prophecies already. So they do sell very, very quickly when they are properly priced. Uh, so that's pretty much how I've made all of my currency in the second day. Uh, so that's pretty much what I would recommend and of course what I mentioned previously is how to go about finding those gaps in the market It's really just that simple uh, It doesn't take any sort of third-party programs or anything like that to find these different gaps uh, Very very easy to do. So anyways, that's pretty much it for the second episode now I do think that if everything sells uh, Today and then tomorrow everything sells very quickly. We should just about be done with the headhunter tomorrow on the next update and then we'll see if we're doing another zero to hero or what is going to be happening with all the december events coming up so before i go as always i do want to say a huge thank you to my supporters so cat stan brandon tim scott axel thomas reese rescoral the great master mercury nick max Frey, alex johnny wolverine hamad welcome back and georgie as well as of course nail it alex kevin the other alex and bizon anybody else who has supported me in the past and anybody else anybody else who wishes to remain anonymous Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you learned a little something. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.